another day, another major storyline about Colorado on social media, and people are blowing this way out of proportion, and they're misinformed. You are Locked on Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked on Buffs. I am your host, Kevin Borba. Today's episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by our sponsors over at Game Time. Let me tell you about Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. We are also brought to you by the Locked on Podcast Network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcast. So thank you guys for tuning in, making me your first listen of the day. Let's dive right in to the latest Colorado drama. If you guys haven't heard, Colorado has allegedly faked a clip on social media and people are people are upset. People are trying to roast Colorado. So, long story short, the Colorado football social or the social media page posted a video of Shador Sanders avoiding the rush, stepping up in the pocket, delivering a strike to LeJounte Wester for a touchdown in the back of the end zone who he kind of toe-tapped in. It was a nice catch. He's super fast. But the video that they posted had like a dramatic sort of, like the camera was, I think it was behind Shador or it was in front of Shador or something. And then all of a sudden it cuts and it looks like it was two separate plays. And so people were like, oh my gosh, Colorado's faking a highlight clip from practice. And this is really a nothing burger because if you guys go to the Locked On Buffs Twitter, I have the real video from a different angle that shows, hey, guess what? They weren't faking it. It is a legitimate touchdown. But people want to say it's not. But that's not that's not what this is, right? We are we're all smart enough to see sort of the underlying message of why this has sort of generated so much buzz, right? Like Arkansas tweeted a video where their quarterback is throwing a slant or not a slant. I think it's a little screen pass. And then he, you see him throwing to the running back. Who's probably five yards away. And then the video cuts and it's like a 60 yard bomb. And it it's funny, right? I don't, I don't disagree. I'm not gonna pretend like it's not funny, but let, let's be real here. Like the reason that everyone is jumping at Colorado is there's this underlying sort of narrative about or in college football. There's a, this underlying sort of mindset, not narrative, a mindset that, Colorado is getting this attention for because Deion Sanders is their head coach. They haven't proven anything. So every time they do something negative, we as a society, as a college football fandom have to jump on them, right? We have to sort of, we have to sort of get on their case for whenever they make mistakes, because what better way to let someone know they messed up than to kick them when they're down? That's sort of the society we live in. Um, that's kind of like the mindset when it comes to Colorado because people don't like the attention they get. People don't like the buzz that they get. People don't like how Deion Sanders does things. Now, a lot of this, there's a lot of exterior motives um, when it comes to those three things, but let's just be real. People don't love what's going on in Boulder. Sorry, my hair's a mess right now. Uh, people don't love what's going on in Boulder. And there's a couple reasons why. And I'm, I'll talk about them before I move on. For starters, Deion Sanders changed how college football is not only viewed, De Deion Sanders changed how college football, how people could be popular in college football. And he changed sort of the narrative around college football that you have to be in a certain region, in a certain conference to be one of the most important programs in college football. So, the way he changed college football, um, he is very public with everything he does, right? That's why, which I'm going to talk about later, the stuff that we're hearing on reports, which I've been told by multiple sources is not true. I'm very unfortunate that it was written altogether. Um, so that's unfortunate. But either way, that's how the, neither here nor there. I'll talk about that later. He has changed how we view co college football, Colorado football as well. He made everything public. From the very first moment he took the job at Colorado, he took the stand and said, hey, that's your starting quarterback right there. That's my son, Shador Sanders. Shador Sanders hadn't even transferred to Colorado yet. And everyone was like, oh, that's weird. Why would he say that? Then to take it a step further, after his first meeting or during his first meeting with the squad that was on the 1-11 Colorado Durrell team, he told them, hey, I'm coming in here to replace all of you. I'm bringing my own luggage. 
it's Louie, and you guys could go ahead and hit the portal because I want to bring in as many portal guys as possible. And so everyone was up in arms because it was like, oh, this Deion Sanders guy, he's disgusting. How could he say that? And it's like every program in college football is having those conversations every year. You know those things called exit meetings that we hear about in the NFL and in college football? Uh, I don't know if you guys hear about it much as much in college football, but it's a thing. Uh, it's called a season exit meeting. At the end of the year, the co- most programs, I'm not going to say every program because I can't speak for every program, but most programs around the country, the coach will meet with the player, um, their position coach or the head coach, will meet with the player, sort of talk about how the season went, what their long-term goals are, and where they fit in with the program. If you don't think that 99.9% of programs around college football are, which the only programs that aren't, encouraging guys to transfer are probably the programs that don't use the transfer portal that much. So, right. Like Stanford is a program. They can use the portal, but they don't get to use it a lot. So why would they be encouraging guys to leave the military academies? They cannot use the portal, right? They don't, they don't, they don't. Why would they look at someone who was on their team and be like, you know what? This just isn't working out. You're not going to, you're not going to work well here. Uh, we're, we're encouraging you to leave. And even then, I'm not going to pretend like those programs don't have those conversations. They very well might. But every program, or mostly every program in college football, at the end of the year, has conversations with players one-on-one where it's like, hey, this isn't working out here for us. We are going to replace you. Your best option is to leave the program. Now, Deion Sanders did that publicly, and so a lot of people were upset about that. Two, why do people hate Colorado or not hate? I, I mean, I think there's a little hatred there. Why do people dislike Colorado? It's a non-traditional program getting attention, right? When we think of college football and we think of the programs that normally get attention, it's Alabama, it's Texas, it's Georgia, it's Michigan, it's Ohio State. And on the West Coast, it's, West Coast, excuse me, it's usually Oregon, it's usually USC. Colorado is a program in the mountain region, right? Boulder Boulder's a great place. I've visited there a couple times. Um, great place, great college town, great energy around the program now. But it's not in the SEC. It's not in a major market like Los Angeles or um, near the Atlanta market. Um, it's it's just not. People around college football who are traditionalists don't like when a traditional program is getting attention or sort of pushing the narrative or pushing the envelope, if you will. So people don't like that. And then, so it's a non-traditional power. Coach Prime does things differently. And Colorado's just getting attention, and people don't like that, right? They don't like that Colorado went 4-8 and and is still one of the most talked about teams in the country. And the same people that are pounding and banging on tables saying, why are we talking about Colorado? They're irrelevant. Paul Feinbaum, I'm looking at you. Are the same people that are going, you know what? Deion Sanders, right? Next coach at USC or Colorado. Biggest story in in the Big 12. Like People care about Colorado. And I think we're getting this Colorado fatigue because of these three reasons. And so when something like Camergate, as I'm calling it, occurs, and it's literally the biggest nothing burger in in the offseason, people care about it because it's Colorado. They want to poke fun at Colorado, and they sort of just want to, yeah, they just want to get on Colorado's case. And so Colorado, everyone cares what they're doing. That's not going to change. It's going to continue to remain that way until Deion Sanders decides to call it a career or whatever happens um, at the end of his coaching career. But people are going to care about what Colorado does, and people just need to get over that and accept that. Um, But it is a little weird that people are going to such measures to sort of discredit what this team's going to do. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the latest in Colorado recruiting. This episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by our sponsors over at Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which, make, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets the first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. My girlfriend and I, we went to Atlanta over the weekend. We went to a Braves game. I used Game Time to get my seats. One, we were right behind home plate, had great seats. We had a great view. That's how we kind of decided. We were like, do we go over here towards the first baseline? 
Let's look at the view. Or do we sit behind the catcher? And behind the catcher, as you can imagine, had a great view on the app. And so that was the deciding factor between us sitting where we sat. And we had a great experience using Game Time. So you can take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to Lockdown Buffs. I appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day, making me a part of your daily routine, making me your first listen of the day. My everydayers, you know who you are. You tune in every day. You like, you subscribe. I appreciate you guys. Make sure to share this with a friend so that way we can continue to grow this community and have some more fun. Let's talk about Colorado's recruiting class. They landed a commitment recently, um, a tight end. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. And then they also received some very exciting news in the recruitment of a four-star receiver um, today or yeah, whenever you're listening to this on, on Wednesday, they received some great news. So they landed a commitment from Zane D'Souza, a tight end, six foot six, 260 pounds, uh, not ranked by on three, but 24 seven sports has him as a three star ESPN has him as a three star. And then rivals has him as a two star. He is a Loveland Colorado native. He chose Colorado over Washington state and Northern Colorado. Um, that's pretty much all that there is to, to know about him. But Colorado, recruiting the state is important. You got to get the recruits that are in your backyard because why wouldn't you? There's going to be some guys that are good. Uh, now let's give to the big name of the class uh, for Colorado, which, I mean, it's a pretty big deal because they are in there with a who's who of sort of this... N- this big brands of college football. They are in a, they're in the mix. But first I want to tell you guys, um, you, if you need a second listen of the day, because I know locked on buffs is your first listen of the day, go check out Spencer McLaughlin over on locked on college football. He has you covered for everything, whether it be the NIL, the transfer portal, new college football, expanded playoff and more. So locked on college football is available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast, part of the podcast network team every day. Back to where we what we were talking about, recruiting nitty-gritty. Colorado is currently among the finalists for four-star wide receiver Andrew Marsh. He cho- He's going to choose between Washington, Colorado, Texas, USC, and Michigan on August 20th. Obviously, he a real who's who. Washington was just in the title game. Michigan won the title. USC and Texas are both blue bl- bloods. And then there's Colorado. Um, what to know? about Mr. Andrew Marsh. Well, six foot two at receiver, which I mean, I love a good big receiver. I, I love the big body guys. And I think Colorado pause resume. Um, I think Colorado is going to have a lot of them um, just sort of in their offense because it, it allows them to take chances. According to 24 seven sports, he's ranked as a 66 player in the country, uh, 10th best receiver, 13 best player in the state of Texas He has around 40 offers. Um, his recruiting breakdown, it says for 24 seven says he's explosive, productive receiver with a lean, wiry, strong build and impressive athletic markers in vertical and broad jump categories, frequent big play merchant that thanks largely to slippery strength and athleticism and run after catch situations or not unorthodox in gait and play style, but fights through tra- tackles and maintains balance to get extra yardage just by a slider frame. He's a long strider runner. Um, he has a lot of track background and gained more than 1100 yards as a junior and enters his senior season with 2400 plus receiving yards um, and then is also someone that can make plays in the return game so he is someone who and they also view him as a long-term legitimate nfl prospect so he is someone that could do a little bit of everything right caught 65 passes for 1100 yards and 15 scores last year um, during his 2022 season texas district 196a Newcomer of the year as a sophomore, finished the year with 53 catches for 845 yards and 11 touchdowns. And then during his freshman season, had 31 catches, 400 over 400 yards and five touchdowns. So this guy does a little bit of everything, right? He's a perfect receiver for Colorado. They want size. They want after the playability. They want speed. They want someone who could make impacts in all aspects of the game. You put this guy on the field and he's going to make plays. And that's exactly what Andrew Marsh does. So Colorado in the top five. And they have a long ways to go. Michigan's viewed as the favorite, but that doesn't mean you could count Colorado out. As long as Deion Sanders 
is in the mix. Like as long as Penn is not put to paper, you cannot count one Mr. Coach Prime out. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the latest on the locker room sort of scandal and what I've been told by someone really close to the program. Very unfortunate situation on what is being reported. Welcome back to Locked on Buffs. I appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day, making me your first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, so make sure to like, subscribe, follow, all that jazz, and let's talk about the latest drama around Colorado football. But first, a sip of my water. So, I'm sure you guys all know the story, right? Colorado reporter um, over at Athlon Sports, who... I have to remind people I'm not associated with it. I'm not associated with his site. I cover Colorado from a national basis. I cover all of college football for Athlon Sports. I cover them from a trending news standpoint. So I do not really have, like, I'm not running their Colorado site. We'll put it that way. Um, so I think that's important to note. So I think a lot of people that have been tagging me, like, hey, figure this out. What, what are we doing? Like, what is happening here? Let me just tell you, from what I was told, someone very close to the um, the situation, someone very close, someone that I respect, someone that you guys respect. I'm obviously not going to name names, um, but we had a conversation over text, and we were just talking about it. And he said he he respects me. He says I respect you. I know this has nothing to do with you, um, but he much of what was reported is absolutely not true. So what was reported was that there was guns in the locker room. Um, there was sort of this notion that it's a real-life Grand Theft Auto video game in Colorado. Um, there was a notion that there was a gambling debt of $10,000. There, there was a notion that Shiloh Sanders was bullying Cormani McClain, physically assaulted him, and then Cormani McClain was telling him that he was going to kill him. Um, what else was in this story? I'm trying to remember. There was a lot of... Just a lot of things that when it was reported, I reached out to people who I knew um, are very close to this situation, uh, very close to the team, and, and they did not share the same sentiment. And then the conversation I had today sort of was just the, the icing on the cake of like, I can't say whether or not the writer of the story was told this information by other people. Like, would it have shocked me that people are trying to um, sort of tear down this program? No. Right. I think it, it kind of reminds me when you have an ex-girlfriend or an ex-boyfriend, whatever it is, and you guys don't end on good terms. And then someone says, hey, were they a good person? Did you enjoy every second with them? And they kind of have an opportunity to pop, to sort of get their licks in. And I think that's what this is. I think if that's the case here, if these um, if these comments were actually made, I think it's a, sort of an instance of someone who left the program not on good terms. But from what I was told much of the substance from the story itself didn't happen. And so if you're Colorado, what do you do for this situation? Well, you can't let this derail you from preparing for North Dakota state in 20, I think it's 22 days at this point. Um, you can't let this actually like distract you. Like if we Colorado is on camera all the time and this stuff is not shown on camera, like there was talk of straps, right? the players were comparing who has the biggest strap, which if you're not familiar with the lingo, that means a firearm. And then the video, which Ryan from DNVR posted it. And I uh, quote tweeted it today. Uh, there's a video from well off media and they're talking about straps. All right. But they're talking about the defense. Like they're not talking about like, Oh, Hey, this is sort of a, this is a sort of uh, like just a scandal. Like people are just doing this. Um, to just have fun. And the writer went on Levitard today and sort of um, talked about it. And Levitard has since deleted all of their, all of their stuff with him. Um, they no longer have, um, they no longer have their interview with him. And I think they were misinformed just like the rest of the cultural ball world has been. Um, but the, the story is, misleading and that's all i'm gonna say and i hope it doesn't distract anyone um i do hope that people i hope the truth comes out like i that's kind of the problem with anonymous 
uh, reporting is like, if you can't get your source to come forward, you have to deal with the blowback. And I know coach prime um, sort of flirted with legal action was kind of uh, what I was shown earlier today. So very weird situation. I'm here to tell you from what I've been told by people who are very close to the program, people that you guys know and respect as well. I'm not going to name them. That's not what happened. And I'm going to leave it at that because I'm, I'm not in the business of dragging people's name through the mud, but I do think that it is worth saying that is not what I've been told. And that is not what people around the program who are also around the program have been told as well. So we'll just have to wait and see if anything more comes out of it. Um, but Nonetheless, I appreciate you guys for tuning in to Locked on Buffs, making me your first listen of the day. If you need a second listen, go check out Locked on College Football. Spencer's got you guys covered on everything you need to know about everything happening in college football. I appreciate you guys for tuning in again, making me your first listen of the day, and I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow, and share this with a friend.